This is lesson one of chapter six. So we're doing slope of a line today. So a little bit of a review of the topics that we looked at in the previous chapter. Um, so we're just focusing on slope. There are, there's a box here where I show you how to calculate slope. And depending on where you look, depending on what textbook you look at or what course you're in, sometimes slope is defined in different ways. So I wanted to put all of those ways here for you. Um, but essentially they all mean the same thing and you can use any one of them and you'll get the same answer. Okay, so slope is just a calculation of essentially how steep a graph is. It also gives you a sense of direction as well. So if a line is going up as you read it from left to right, you're going to have a positive slope. And if you have a line that's going down as you read it from left to right, it's going to be a negative slope. So let me just show you that on the side here. A line looking like this will have a positive slope. And a line going like this will have a negative slope. I always just imagine myself walking on that line and I'm gonna walk in the direction that I read from left to right. If I had to walk uphill, up I think of as being associated with positive, so I'm gonna have a positive slope. If I imagine myself walking on this negative line and I would walk in the direction that I read, I would have to walk downhill and da I associate down with negative. So I have a negative slope. Okay, so we measure slope this way. Rise, I'll use yellow for rise today, and over run, I'll use blue for run. Another way that we can write this is change in y divided by change in x. Um, because y represents the vertical axis, right? Here's y. And x represents the horizontal axis when we're looking at a graph. So rise would be your change in the y values, and then run would be the change in the x values. Now this symbol here, the triangle, you may not have seen this before. It's actually a Greek letter. Um, capital delta. And it means change in. So we use it in science class and math class and sometimes other classes like economics and it's referring to change, change in. So if I was going to just read that off, I would read change in y over change in x. Another way to think of this is um, this change is by subtracting two y values. You'll determine how the difference between the two. So if you have two points, you could do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So those three formulas are all equivalent. You can use any single one. Okay, so let's just look at the image here. As we go from point number one, I'll just label this here, point one to point two, we have a change in y in the downwards direction, right? So we read this left to right, just like you would read a sentence. Um, and so our, we can just count it. 1, 2, 3, so the change in y would be negative 3, and the change in x would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So actually I'll use pink just to be consistent. There we go. So the slope of this line would be negative 3 over negative, or sorry, over 5. Okay, or you can write it as a decimal, 0 0.6, they're meaning the same thing. Um, and again, we can see that's negative because the line is moving in the downwards direction as I read it from left to right. Okay, so that's how to calculate slope. Now, the cool thing is too, if you have a straight line, it actually doesn't matter which two points. The rise over run is consistent all the way along the straight line, so you can use any two points you want on the graph to calculate your slope. You'll get the same answer no matter which two points you use. Okay, let's do some examples here. So we're going to do different slope calculations. We're going to do some from a graph. We're going to do some from um, coordinates. And we're going to draw some lines with certain slopes as well. Okay, so let's look at this scenario here. Um, I have two points on my grid. And when you're given a graph, I just recommend counting. Um, so my rise is going to be this distance here, how far I go up from this point to that point. And my run is going to be this distance here, the change in x, how far I go over from that point to that point. Okay, so my rise, let's just count. 
I got one, two, three, four, five, six. And my run, I just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the slope is six rise over run. Rise over run, which in this case is six over ten. And we should reduce it if we can. In this case, we can. It'd be three over five. Or you can write it as a decimal of 0 0.6. Both are fine. Okay. And I'm just going to continue my highlighting. There we go. Okay, let's do this one. You could pause the video here and try it yourself. I'm going to show you in this one that you, it doesn't actually matter which two points you use. So I'm going to pick these two points on the graph. I'm going to pick this to be my point number one and this to be my point two. Um, okay, so my rise, I'm going to go down one, two, three, one, two, three, four. My rise is negative four. And my run is one, two. So I went down four and over two. So my slope is negative four over two. And we should reduce that if I can. That would be negative two over one or just negative two. It actually doesn't matter which two points you would have chose. I could have chosen these two points here, this point and this point. I would have counted one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six, and one, two, three. But negative six over three is the same as negative two. I still get the same slope. Doesn't matter which point I choose or which two points I choose, you get the same slope no matter what. Okay. Um, let's draw a line with a certain slope. It says draw a line segment with each given slope. It doesn't say where to start my line, so it actually doesn't matter. I'm going to do this one in pink, and I'll do this one in purple. Okay, so pink. I'm going to start here. Again, it doesn't matter because it doesn't say. And I'm going to go 7 up and 5 to the right. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to erase that point and draw my line. You should use a ruler for this, but I can't use a ruler on the screen, so I'm going to kind of do my best to draw a straight line. Um, oh, technically I'm reading this. It says line segment, so you can just draw it with truncated ends. Um, okay, here my rise over run is negative, so I'm going to count downwards. Rise is negative three. The run is eight. And again, you can start anywhere. I'll just start here. So I'm going to go three down, one, two, three, and then over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and draw my line. I'll erase that other point. Okay, there we go. Okay, last one here. What if you're not given a picture? So you're just given two coordinates. Let's label these coordinates. So when you're given a set of coordinates, um, the first one is X, the second one is Y, and here this is X and this is Y. Since we have two coordinates, let's label the first point X1, Y1, and the second coordinate X2, Y2. So this is point number two, that's why we labeled it with twos, and this one is point number one. Now if we scroll back up to our slope formulas, we see we have one that has um, that would be perfect for this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I would recommend if you've got points to use that formula. So I'm going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, the 1 and the 2 are just referring to which points you have. So the y values are these ones, and then the x values are these ones. It actually doesn't matter which one is point 0.1, which one's point 0.2. As long as you use the formula, um, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so y2 would be 1 minus, and then we have negative 3. And then x2 is 2, and we'll have minus negative 5. So this is 4, and this is 7. So our slope is 4 over 7. You should reduce if you can, but here 4 over 7 cannot be reduced, so that's our slope. Okay. One last thing here in our lesson, horizontal and vertical lines. So I'm going to draw a coordinate grid 
y, x. Okay, if I have a horizontal line, it looks like this. Um, if I'm looking at the slope, slope equals rise over run. And what I notice is the y value doesn't go up. It stays consistent. So my rise is essentially zero. So when I divide the number zero by anything, I just get zero. So the slope would be zero. And this kind of matches with that analogy I was talking about earlier. If you imagine yourself walking on that line, you would just be walking on a flat line. So you'd have zero slope. Okay, so horizontal slopes have slope zero. Let's look at a vertical line. I'm going to draw a new coordinate grid here. Vertical lines go straight up and down like this. Here's a vertical line. Now this one has rise to it, but it doesn't have a run. Like there's no change in X. So if I was going to look at the slope, which is rise over run, the run is essentially zero because there's no change in X. It's the same X the whole time. And when you divide a, oops, just realizing you can't see what I just wrote there. There we go. Um, and if you divide by zero, uh, you can try it in your calculator if you want. It gives you an undefined number. So, and even that fits my analogy too. Like if you imagine yourself walking on that vertical line, you can't, you'd fall off, right? We can't walk on a vertical, like on a wall or something, unless we're Spider-Man. Um, and so we'd have an undefined slope here. Undefined. So when you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero. When you have a vertical line, the slope is undefined. It's kind of two special cases. All right, that's the end of the lesson.